Good morning, class. Happy Wednesday. We're continuing to work on rate today as usual, but today we're doing something really cool and interesting. It's kind of new, but um, it just builds off of our understanding of rate that we already have, okay? So don't worry. So I need you to open your textbook to page 49 because we're gonna look at this new thing through the questions that we see here, okay? You might already notice something new. Okay, because today we are looking at something that's called rate tables, okay? So the cool thing is that the value is already given to you for the value of one, so you don't have to find that, right? But what we're beginning to look at is how much things cost over time, okay? And looking at different values, okay? So let's look at question nine and see what it looks like. So, Question nine tells us the table shows the rates of charges at a parking lot, okay? So from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., it's a dollar per half hour, okay? But after 5 p.m., it's a dollar per hour. So it gets cheaper after 5 p.m., okay? So that's what's in this box here, okay? So now it tells us Mr. Carlson parked his car there from 1.30 p.m. to 7 p.m., how much did he have to pay? Okay, so we know that from eight to five, it's a dollar per half hour. Okay, but from, but after five, It's a dollar per hour, okay? So first we have to look at how long Mr. Carlson was there in this bracket of time, okay? So he says he was there from 1.30 to 7 p.m., which means that he was there in this bracket from 1.30 to 5 o'clock, okay? which equals three and a half hours. Okay, so he was there for three and a half, and a half hours at the rate of a dollar per half hour. Okay, so there are seven half hours in this three and a half hour time. Okay, so that means for the first bracket, from eight to five bracket, he was charged $7, okay? So then he was also there after that, right? So he was there from five o'clock to seven o'clock. And that rate is $1 per hour, okay? And he was there for two hours. Okay, five to seven. Okay, and the after five rate is two is a dollar per hour at this point, which means that he paid two dollars for the two hours that he was there after five. Okay, which means, and this is where we have to total it all together, that the total that he paid was nine dollars. So Mr. Carlson paid $9 for parking. Okay, and you see that we have to use the table to help guide us to how much things cost. So when the rates change, we have to split it up so that we can address each rate separately, okay? And then we add it together, of course, to find the total value. Okay, so let's look at that with a new question. So question number 10 tells us that the workers in a factory are paid the following rates. Okay, so again, we look at our table to tell us the rates, okay? And it says weekdays are $28 per day and Saturdays and Sundays are $38 per day, okay? So, I'm gonna put week is $28 and Saturday, Sunday, 
$38. Okay. And it tells us that Mr. Henderson worked from Friday to the following Tuesday. How much was he paid? Okay. So he worked for a total of five days. Okay. But of those five days, so Friday was a weekday. Okay. But then Saturday and Sunday are the weekend value. And then Monday and Tuesday are the weekdays again. Okay, so we have three values for weekdays and two have to be the Saturday, Sunday value. Okay, so what we have to do is find the value for the weekday, which is 28 times three, and find the value for the weekend, which is 38 times two. Okay. So on the weekend, he earned $76, okay? And on the weekday, he earned $84, the weekdays, okay? And then for our final answer, we just have to add them together. So I'll write it in orange. Mr. Henderson earned $160, okay? Because we took the two different rates and we added them together. Okay, so there's another example when we're looking at rate tables. We have to follow the rates according to the categories. Okay, let's look at number 11. So number 11 tells us the table shows the postage rate for sending magazines to another state. Okay, and so this one has four different categories for weighting. Okay, so you see that if it's under a certain value, it costs that much. And, but if it's over that, it goes up to the next category. And then it's over that up to the next category. And the last category, is per additional step of 100 grams, okay? So that means that when you have something, you start with a value of 100 grams, which is 70, but then everything over that, if it's like 150, you have to add the last category. And if it's 250, then you have to start with your base rate and add the last category twice, okay? So we'll look at that together. But let's start with, a, so it says find the postage for a magazine which weighs 85 grams, okay? And the thought bubble tells us that 85 grams is more than 50 grams but less than 100 grams. So when we look at our chart, it tells us the value. So when it's 85 grams, that means it's above the 50 gram category. So the 50 gram category was 40 cents, but because it's higher than that, it's less than 100, so it fits in the 100 gram category, okay? So the answer for A, we just have to read the chart, okay? So A, the answer is 70 cents, okay? And we know that because it was 85 grams, which is more than the 50 gram category, but less than the 100 gram category, okay? So that's why it belongs in the up to 100 gram category, okay? So for B, we have to think about it a little bit. It tells us to find the postage for a magazine that weighs 330 grams, okay? So we know that for the first 100 grams, it's gonna be 70 cents, okay? So that's where we start. But now we have another 230 grams. So we have to address that, 
okay? And in order to find that, we have to look at the last line, which tells us that per additional step of 100 grams is 60 cents, okay? So that's our rate, and we have to apply that. So because 230 is between 200 and 300, that means it's three steps. So we have to do 0 0.60 times three, okay? Because that's where it belongs in the set, which means this section is gonna be $1.80, okay? That's not where we stop because we have to add these two together, right? So our final value for the final answer is that the magazine costs 250 to send. Okay, so it costs 250 to send because we've added these two values together, okay, according to their rates. Okay, so these type questions like this will take probably two steps and then you add them together. Okay, but the cool thing is that you get to see the rate to start with so you don't have to find it. Okay, so let's look at one more example and then I'll let you go. Okay, number 12 tells us, in a city, the rates of charges for taxi fare are as follows. Okay, so you see, it's divided into two rates. For the first kilometer, it's 240, and for the rest of them, each additional kilometer is 40 cents. Okay? So, find the taxi fare for a trip of five and a half kilometers. Okay. So we know that the fare for the first kilometer, so here I'll put five and a half kilometers up here and that's what we're finding. For the first kilometers, it's gonna be 240, okay? But then the next four and a half, kilometers and again this is kind of the same as the postage whereas it where if it's in the half category we have to bump it up the bracket okay so it kind of rounds up if you will because which means that we have to multiply it by five okay and we know that our additional kilometer rate is 40 cents, okay? So that means that the value of that is going to be $2, okay? Okay, which means our total cost is 440. $4.40 for five and a half kilometers. Okay. So if you come across something like this where it's a half, but the half is not addressed in the category, remember that you have to kind of bump up to the nearest category to find your answer. Okay. So, now it's your turn. You'll be working on exercise 35 today, okay? Which is on page 59 and 60, it's two pages, okay? And if you have any questions, please let me know. And don't forget, you can use your anchor charts as well, okay?